Work queues, also known as task queues, is a mechanism used in message-based systems to distribute and parallelize tasks or works across multiple consumers. When using RabbitMQ, dispatching modes play a crucial role in the way these tasks are distributed to different consumers. In this video, let's learn the two different dispatch modes in RabbitMQ and how that affects the distribution of work amongst consumers. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my RabbitMQ series. I will be using a RabbitMQ instance hosted in Amazon MQ. However, you can use any of the supported hosting mechanisms by RabbitMQ, which we covered in the Getting Started RabbitMQ video. The idea of a work queue is to distribute time-consuming tasks among multiple workers. This is to avoid doing a resource intensive task immediately and having to wait for it to complete. This is particularly useful when you're building web applications or where there are user interactions where a job needs to be submitted and that can happen in the background so that the user doesn't have to synchronously wait for the job to complete. In these cases, the job is captured as form as a message and dropped into a queue from where different consumers can pick this up. Now, if you look at the example here, you can see there is a producer producing messages into a queue and then there are consumers picking out these messages from this queue and working on them. Now, the way that these messages are getting distributed to the consumers affects how soon you are able to get through the work in this queue. Now, RabbitMQ supports two different modes and let's see exactly what they are. Let's jump on to Rider, where I have an existing solution set up, which is called Dispatch Modes, and it has a receive and send application. This is the exact same solution that I set up in my previous two videos on getting started and also message acknowledgement. It will be there in the descriptions below. Now the send simply sends a message and the receive receives and consumes the message. Inside the send, we have the factory, we create the connection, and then we use that to send a message on the channel. The receive similarly uses the eventing basic consumer to consume messages from RabbitMQ, and all it does in this case is write to a console application. Now I have some additional code in here, which handles exception and shows you how the message acknowledgement works. We covered this in the previous video on message acknowledgements. Before we start sending work and seeing how it's getting consumed, let's add some arbitrary delay onto this message consuming so that it helps explain the message dispatching a bit more easily. So in this case, we are checking whether the message contains the word exception and we throw an exception. Similarly, let's see if this message is an integer value and then we can add an arbitrary task.delay based on that integer value. So let's try and read this message as an integer. So let's say if int.tryparse, let's pass in the message itself and let's pass this as an out variable and also let's get this as the value. So let's say this as delay time. So if this is a delay time integer, in this case, let's add an arbitrary delay. For now, let's simply say thread.sleep and let's add in the delay time. So this delay time should be in milliseconds. So let's pass this into thousand so that we will pass this as seconds. So if the message is an integer, it is going to add a delay time. So let's see this in action. So let's switch over to our console. Let's go into the send application and let's use .NET run. Similarly, let's open a new console tab and let's go to the exact same console location of my application. Let's go into the receive and let's say .NET run as well. Now we have the send and the receiver running. So let's send a message. So let's specify hello and this is working as expected. Now let's send another message. Let's say two and this has received the message and now it's waiting for two seconds before it says process the message. Similarly, if I say one, it's going to wait for one second and say process the message. Now all of this works fine with one consumer. So let's add one more consumer to this mix. Let's go into the receiver and let's specify .NET run again. Now we have two consumers pulling work from the exact same queue. So now if I send one more message, so let's say one, and that's going to be picked up by the first consumer. Let's send another message, and that's going to be picked up by this second consumer over here. The third message that's going to come is going to be picked up by this first consumer that started. Now you can see that these messages are being alternated between the first and the second consumer. 
Now, if I start one more consumer, it's going to alternate between those three. So it's going to send the first message to this first consumer, then to the second, and then to the third, and then keep going around. This mechanism of distributing the work is referred to as round robin dispatching. Now, by default, RabbitMQ is configured to use round robin dispatching. So, RabbitMQ will send each of the messages to the next consumer in sequence, and on average, every consumer will get the same number of messages. So, over time, if you get a hundred messages, these messages will be distributed equally amongst these two consumers. So, most likely, they will get fifty in one and the fifty in the other one if both have started at the same time. However, this mechanism has a slight flaw. So if I come back to here and let's say I send a message with 1 and the next message is 10. Now this is going to wait for 10 seconds. However, if I send again a message, the message is immediately processed here but the next message does not get processed until that 10 is getting completed. So if I want to show that again, so let's send a message with 20 and let's say we get a message with 1 and if I send a message again with 1, you can see that this message is not appearing here. However, if I send subsequent messages, that's getting processed by the other consumer. So this consumer is now being blocked by this big message that takes a longer time to process. While the other messages are waiting because that's being held in this memory of this particular consumer. So the round robin dispatching does not work efficiently if your workloads are not similarly sized. And it ends up blocking these messages in the queue for as long as the time it takes to process those messages. Now if I have one big message, let's say that takes 50 seconds, that consumer is going to be blocked for 50 seconds. Now any alternate message is going to be delivered to this but being held in the working memory of that particular consumer. It has to wait for 50 seconds to get processed. This is where we can use another dispatching mode of RabbitMQ which is referred to as fair dispatch. Now with the round robin, it was blindly dispatching every nth message to the nth consumer. Now this works great if the messages are evenly sized and getting processed in similar time. However, that's not always the case with real life workloads. Some messages might be processed quicker than others. Now in these cases, we can set up RabbitMQ so that it sends the messages to the consumer that is ready and available for working. So any consumer that's blocked will continue to be doing that work and will not get any further messages. However, if there are free consumers, those consumers will get distributed the message. We can achieve this by setting the quality of service, also referred to as QoS, using the basic QoS method and setting a prefetch count on this RabbitMQ consumer. So this tells RabbitMQ not to give more than the specified number of messages to a worker at a specific time. So it waits for those worker to complete those many messages and acknowledge them before sending them new messages. So let's see how we can get this to work in our example. So let's come back to Rider. Inside our receive application, once we have created the channel, let's use the basic QoS method. So let's specify the basic QoS and pass in the appropriate parameters. Let's specify the prefetch size to be zero, which is going to be the default. Let's use the prefetch count in our scenario and specify this to be one. So in this case, only one message will be received by the consumer at a time and it has to acknowledge that message to get a new message. Now let's also specify global as false. We will learn the different properties of this QoS in a different video. But for now, we will just look at the prefetch count and specify this as one so that we just get one message at a time. So once we have specified this, Let's go on and run our applications again. So let's clear this console and let's start this application. So let's use .NET run and let's also run our other consumer. So now we have two consumers running and ready to be getting work. So let's start sending messages. So if I say first one and then if I send one more message with the word one, these are getting distributed similarly. However, let's send a bigger work. So let's send a work which has 50 seconds and let's send messages with just one second each. Now in these cases, you can see the first consumer is blocked by that 50 second message. However, all subsequent messages are getting received by consumer two. 
Now this will continue until the consumer 1 is free and has acknowledged that message 50 is processed and it will start getting new messages. So if I send more messages until the 50 seconds has passed, you can see all the messages is getting processed by this consumer which is ready to be working. Now our consumer 1 has processed this message. So now if I send further messages, consumer 1 also picks up those messages. Now in a scenario where both these consumers are blocked, these messages are going to be backed up inside the queue. So let's send a message which takes 40 seconds each and both of the consumers are blocked. Now if I send further messages, you can see none of these consumers are picking them up. So if I navigate into my RabbitMQ admin and if I go into queues, you can see that there are five messages that's ready to be picked up and this is waiting for the consumers to become available. Now, as soon as these consumers get available, these messages will be consumed. Now, this is a scenario where you can also add a new consumer and that will start picking up more work. So let's go into and create a new consumer. So let's go into receive and let's specify .NET run. And now that's going to start picking up the work. So you can see this has immediately started picking up all those work. Now I have three consumers running, which are all picking up work from the same queue. Now one thing to note with the fair dispatching is that it will only work with manual acknowledgement. Because with the automatic acknowledgement, the message is getting acknowledged as soon as it is getting sent to a consumer. Which means the consumer is ready and available for work every time, even though if it might be blocked on a work by itself. So when setting the basic QoS and prefetch count, you will need to make sure that you are also using auto acknowledgement as false and manually acknowledging as soon as you complete the work or rejecting the work if you have an exception. We covered message acknowledgements in a previous video which will be linked here and in the descriptions below. I hope this helps you to understand the two different dispatching modes in RabbitMQ and how it affects the work that is being processed. We saw how the round robin strategy simply alternates between consumers and sends the messages to them and how that affects the processing of messages. The fair dispatch makes sure that there is an efficient use of all the consumers that's available and sends the work to whichever consumer that's free and ready to process message. Now we will learn in a future video how to choose the appropriate prefetch size so that you make the best use of your consumers and also avoid chatty network calls to RabbitMQ from these consumers. If you want to be notified when new videos come out, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, please also hit the like button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.